So what exactly is social, entre social entrepreneurship? I mean, what is this thing? There's a few definitions that we'll start with, but I think you're going to hear it more told, I think, in, in a really, really inspiring way through some of the stories. A social entrepreneur identifies and solves social problems on a large scale. Just as business entrepreneurs create and transform whole industries, social entrepreneurs act as the change agents for society, seizing opportunities others miss in order to improve systems, invent and disseminate new approaches, and advance sustainable solutions that create social value. Social leadership is about unleashing the power of creativity, innovation, and marketplace efficiency on some of our toughest social and environmental challenges and providing scalable, self-sustaining, high-impact solutions to those problems. You know, there's over 80 universities around the world now teaching social entrepreneurship. In fact, many of them have centers established on campuses. These include Harvard and Oxford and Stanford and right here in Chicago. Uh, certainly Northwestern, the University of Chicago, and many others around the world. In fact, it was a social venture business plan competition at my alma mater, the University of Notre Dame, just down the road, where I first was introduced to social entrepreneurship. I was serving as a judge in a business plan competition that had a social venture track. I met a couple of young grads who had a cool idea. We went through the competition together. I was mentoring them. We won first place, and we began to scale the operation from there. As an entrepreneur, one of the things that attracted me to the opportunity that became Better World Books was it had to be something that would basically stand on the merits of its own value creation and be subjected to the same kind of analytical rigor that any new opportunity would be, social or not. It had to be disruptive, it had to be something that could scale, and it had to be a game changer. I think that's what this whole week is about, changing the game. So let me tell you a little bit about what we've done at Better World Books. So we have a couple of fundamental rights, beliefs, core values, whatever we want to call them, that we believe in. We believe that every individual has the right to be literate. There's almost a billion people in this world, two-thirds of them are women, who are illiterate, including 40 million functionally illiterate adults here in the United States. Literacy, we believe, at Better World Books, is fundamental to breaking the cycle of poverty and dependency. Our mission statement a global bookstore that harnesses the value of books to bring literacy and opportunity to people around the world. We like to think of ourselves as the online bookstore with a soul. So how did we get there? Well, our base business model is pretty simple. We run around the country pretty much and now into the UK collecting books, used books from everywhere, college campuses, libraries, national drop boxes. You can even go online at betterwellbooks.com with what we call our click and ship program and actually send us the books, we'll actually pay to get them. Once we get the books, we do three things. We either sell them online, we donate them, or we recycle them. We have US and international nonprofit partners that benefit from every sale. So every time we sell a book at betterwellbooks.com, part of the sales price, not the profit, the actual sales price of the book essentially gets channeled to one of these nonprofit partners. A couple of the local or regional beneficiaries, including right here in Chicago, an organization known as Chicago Literacy. We also worked with um, the New, York, New Orleans Public Library Foundation quite a bit after Katrina. And of course, and also a, pro a book called, a program, the Prison Book Program, which is the largest program of its kind in the United States, essentially getting books into the hands of those incarcerated. We have actually a, a, over 100 of these partnerships on five continents. Basically, again, these are the recipients of every time a book sells, these are the people that are getting some of the cash. We sell on 26 marketplaces around the world, hence, again, a global online bookstore. So we sell on Amazon.com, but we also, of course, are building our own brand at Better World Books. Eight million titles, nine million new customers, shipped over 200 countries. We've become one of the top five online sellers of used books in the world. And I don't really bring this up except to make really a simple point about scale. <laughs> when you're selling over 21 million books, we're up to over 20,000 books a day now. And again, these are a few key metrics essentially saying that if you can't scale, you will not have impact. They really obviously go hand in hand. So whether we're looking at something like employees or the amount of warehouse space we have, how many books we process a day, how much we've invested in technology, these are rigorous analytical business type metrics that just because you're a social entrepreneur or a social venture, you're not paying, you have to pay attention obviously to them. These are the key drivers of the business. Let's talk about the social impact. We've generated now over $10 million and growing. We're at about almost $12,000 a day that's being actually generated to those nonprofits I discussed. We've also donated about 5.4 million books. And again, that's now scaling at about 200,000 books a week. 
Environmental impact, over 80 million pounds of books saved from landfills and over 23,000 tons of carbon footprint offset generated. We also just over the past two years have received some very distinguished awards from the United States EPA for these efforts alone. Financial, for the financial folks in the room, you can see that's a, that's a pretty good picture, especially given the recession we've had through 2008, 2010, um, growing at 80% a year or more. We're at 60 million now, scaling to 100 million in the next two years. The point I'm trying to make here is social leadership is not easy. It's not soft. It's not mushy. It's not kumbaya, okay? It's basically largely due, and you can't essentially even pin your whole hopes on the mission itself. What social leadership is focused on scale. It's becoming self-sustaining, getting the best talent, technology, tools, and subjecting the business model ultimately to the rigors and efficiencies of the marketplace. Government nonprofits are necessary but insufficient to deal with the enormity and scale of the social and environmental challenges we face. If you look at just the U.S. economy alone, almost 70% of the economy is in the private sector. Therefore, we at Better World Books believe that <coughs> we must find a way to harness the power of business to solve social and environmental challenges at home and around the world. And on behalf of our 400 colleagues at Better World Books, we want to thank you for being here today and thanking everybody, including Chicago Ideas Week, for having Better World Books as part of this discussion here this morning.